Welcome to another educational video from EGIS Associates. In this video, we're going to be talking about does your computer have enough horsepower to run Esri's new desktop application ArcGIS Pro? By now, you should know that Esri's Arc Pro is going to be replacing the venerable Arc Map, Arc Catalog, Arc Scene, and Arc Globe applications. And this is a whole new product from Esri. It's not just a revamp of their existing product line. This is brand new from scratch coding that they've used to put together this new application. And ArcGIS Pro is 64-bit instead of the 32-bit that we found in the older applications of ArcMap, ArcCatalog, ArcScene, and ArcGlobe, which means it's designed to support our modern hardware, meaning that it's not limited on the amount of RAM it can use. It can use well over the 4 gigabytes that the older applications were limited to. It supports hyper-threading meaning it can make use of multi-core processors to distribute the processing load within those cores. It also supports graphics processing units to handle the graphics load that is inherent with all of the maps that we create. And more importantly, with an Arc Pro, we can now do 3D. And that's really going to stress a lot of computers that don't have a graphics processor unit in it. And so Arc Pro is designed from the get-go to leverage that hardware that's available to us in modern computers. You know, one thing people say, or one of the things I've encountered as we talk to various groups that are looking to migrate over to ArcGIS Pro is, oh, my, my hardware's fine. I, I've got a computer that runs ArcMap and ArcCatalog and even ArcScene, ArcGlobe. It does it fine. So Arc Pro is not going to be a problem. Do not assume that just because your computer runs ArcMap or ArcCatalog now that it will run ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro has much higher hardware requirements than the older ArcMap and ArcCatalog. And it, it stands to reason. ArcMap was first developed in 1999, and they've been using that same code base through every version up to the 10.6 that's out now. Arc Pro is developed in a whole new environment. It's .NET. Uh, it's designed to run on these modern computers that have been released. So don't assume that just because you're currently able to run ArcMap and ArcCatalog that your computer is going to successfully run Arc Pro. Now what Esri recommends for hardware is the following. So at a minimum level, it recommends a hyper-threaded dual-core processor. That's the minimum level. Its true recommendation for most users would be a quad-core processor. And for those that may not be familiar with what a core is, it's a mini processor with inside your processor. When you go to purchase a, a new computer one of the things they're going to list is it dual core, quad core, and now they even have systems that have six, eight, or more cores in them. And they're just, like I said, mini processors that can be used to handle the load. So we can divvy up uh, the, the processing load. So if we're saying buffering uh, a group of parcels, I can say, okay, you, uh, core one, you buffer these 5,000 parcels, core two, these other 5,000, core three, uh, this 2,500. And core four, you assimilate the results of that, right? So I can distribute that processing load across those cores, and that then means I get better performance. I get faster results. Uh, Esri recommends a minimum of four gig of, of RAM, with eight being the preferred. Uh, I, I would say don't even try it at four gig. You're going to have a lot of headaches at four gig. Eight is the bare minimum that I would recommend even thinking about running our Arc Pro with. So uh, your video Arc Pro, like Arc Map, is uh, very graphics intensive. So uh, it does require some pretty beefy graphics capability. Now, if you're running 2D maps, it's not that much different than what you have now in Arc Map. Uh, but certainly if you get into 3D graphics it's, graphics, it's going to be much more intensive. So at a minimum, you've got to have a graphics uh, capability of 1024 by 768 resolution. It's got to support DirectX 11, Shader 4.1, and OpenGL 3.3. That's the minimum. The recommended is uh, all of that, plus a, Esri's recommending a dedicated graphics processing unit. And two gigabytes of graphics or video RAM. 
that's usually going to be on a standalone video card, a separate card that's in your computer, as opposed to running what they call integrated graphics. Okay, so integrated graphics is where you leverage your primary system resources, your primary CPU and RAM to support the graphics rendering that is displayed on your, your monitor. A dedicated GPU and RAM or dedicated graphics card that that would be on leverages its own processor and RAM to render what's on your display. So it doesn't put more load on your existing system resource. And further for higher level recommendation or what Esri lists as preferred, um, you also need the shader model 5.0 supported and OpenGL 4.5 as opposed to 3.3. Uh, again, that's the, the preferred Esri recommendation. Now, Arc Pro does take up a good bit of hard disk, so Esri is recommending a minimum of 32 gigabytes of free space on your hard dot drive. Uh, and this is not just for the install. This is also for the operation. ArcGIS Pro likes to build caches or local copies of your data so that it's faster, more efficient, and, and all of those kind of things. So every project you open, every map you view, every scene you view is going to end up being cached in some form or fashion, and thus why you need greater hard disk space uh, for ArcGIS Pro to run successfully. So again, 32 gigabytes is the, the minimum, as Rick recommends. Now, based on our own experiences running ArcGIS Pro, we have some more detailed recommendations for your system. Uh, and again, this is our own experiences of having run ArcGIS Pro since it was first released. And even before that, we were part of the beta program. So our suggestions for a basic user. So a basic user to us is somebody that opens and views a map, prints a map, maybe performs some queries and very simple editing. Okay, so that is what we uh, mean by a basic user. So our recommendation at the minimum level for CPU, an i5 dual core processor. And that should be sufficient for, for those that are just casual users that, that view a map, print a map, uh, that kind of thing. If they're a slightly higher level uh, user, meaning that they not only view and print maps, but maybe they perform some queries, they do some basic editing, tabular editing, simple spatial edits, uh, not working with topologies, that kind of thing, then uh, an i5 quad core or better processor would be recommended to take up the additional load of the processing that has to be done with that increased usage level. Now as to, to RAM, uh, as I mentioned earlier, eight gig is absolutely the minimum I would uh, suggest to try to even run ArcGIS Pro on. Uh, again, if you're that m very minimal level user, that should be fine. Uh, again, if you do slightly more with queries and some simple edits and those kind of things, then 12 gigabytes or more is recommended. Do remember, again, with Arc Pro being 64-bit, there is no real limit on the amount of RAM you can use. So feel free to, for, to, to load it up if you desire. Uh, but those are our basic recommendations here. Uh, video definitely need that graphics card. So with a dedicated GPU, uh, again, if you're uh, just working with 2D data, then two gigabytes of video RAM should be sufficient. If you are getting up into either really large data sets or you're getting into 3D, then at least four gigabytes of memory on that video card is recommended. For your hard drives, we agree with Esri on the free space. Uh, however, to the hardware itself, we recommend at a minimum a one terabyte SATA 7200 RPM drive in there. Preferred would be a solid state drive, 512 gigabytes or larger. The uh, tr data transfer rates on solid state are so much better than traditional uh, drives that it's well worth the investment and the cost on those have come way down and the reliability has gone way up. So we really encourage you to, to get one of those uh, so that you can, you know, run your OS on it, ArcGIS Pro on it, and then at least store your, your caches on it, uh, if not full data sets to that. If you are pulling data in from a server, then you definitely want a gigabyte network adapter, not a 10100, but a full gigabyte on there. 
Again, assuming you have the network infrastructure to support that, you know, gigabit switches and, and so, so on. Uh, if you're working with really large data sets, then maybe dual cards would be uh, acceptable at that point with load balancing between them. But uh, in most cases, just a single gigabit network adapter will work. We typically recommend dual monitors, 27-inch uh, or bigger. Uh, you can, if you're a casual user, get by with a single 27-inch. But do remember the... Screen re Real Estate and Arc Pro is still a premium. You still have uh, multiple windows that'll be opened. Um, the ribbon's going to be there. All of that that reduce the, the data view area. So having at least a second monitor to pull some of that off to free up some screen real estate is uh, well worth it. Now, if you are a power user, so you're a, a true GIS hardcore user, you're doing a lot of editing, a lot of analysis, working with topologies, uh, working with linear networks of some form or fashion, all that, then you, you really need a, to beef up your machine. So again, we recommend minimum i7 dual core, preferably a quad core or better. Uh, again, you're going to be able to leverage all of those cores with the new architecture found in Art Pro. RAM minimum for a power user is 16 gig. Don't recommend anything less than that. Uh, I've actually found for most data sets that 16 gig is kind of the sweet spot. I have a laptop that originally had 16 gig. I ran Arc Pro for or have run it since it, it came out. Recently, I upgraded to 32 gigabytes, so I've doubled my RAM. But I haven't really seen a big performance increase with that. Now, again, I'm working with small data sets, uh, city-sized, uh, uh, small counties. I uh, haven't worked with a, a big county data set. So something like, say, a Fulton County in Georgia that has 200 to 300,000 parcels. I really haven't uh, worked with something of that size. So maybe the difference would be felt bigger or more so with a, a larger data set. Uh, just haven't really tested that to see, but 16 seems to definitely be a sweet spot for performance. You definitely see a big difference between uh, 16 gig and even 12 gig uh, bytes there, and definitely a big difference between 8, so uh, recommend at least 16. Uh, again, video card, got to have it with that GPU, uh, 16, or I'm sorry, 4 gigs of video RAM, uh, is the minimum I would go through for a power user. Again, if you're dealing with larger data sets or 3D, the more video RAM you can get on there, definitely the, the better. Uh, same hard drive recommendations from before. Again, those solid state drives are really where you want to be, if at all possible. And same with your network adapter, gigabit is the way you want to go with that for, for sure. Uh, monitors, minimum dual 27 inches is the way to do it. Um, like I said, if you run dual monitors, you get a 10 to 15 production increase at a minimum. So that 10 to 15% more than makes up for the cost of the, the monitor. I've actually started running triple monitors with, with our team here, and it really uh, increases their ability to, to focus. They can have their maps and scenes on one, their various windows, and uh, even attribute to another. And then on the third monitor, they're having their uh, email open to respond to that. Or they'll also have uh, source documents, plats, deeds, things they're using uh, to update data and whatnot on the third. And it just makes it much more efficient and effective for them. And again, it the ROI there more than pays for the, the multiple monitors. And that's the advantage of one of those dedicated video cards is most of them will support multiple outputs. So they'll support two, three, or sometimes even four video outputs all at the same time. And because it has its dedicated processing unit, it can handle the load of all of that graphics going across it. So uh, definitely a big advantage there. So uh, a couple of things we definitely don't recommend i3 processors or less just don't some of the mobile processors that are out there just not even worth fooling with will arc pro run on them yeah technically but you're not going to be happy with the experience we found older amd processors just don't seem to work as well with the arcgis platform at all so 
We tend to recommend avoiding those. Now, the new Ryzen processors AMD has come out with recently potentially could work well. I say potentially because we haven't had the opportunity to really test those uh, here, hoping this summer to possibly build a system with a Ryzen chipset in it. Uh, and if we do, we'll let you know the results of that. But um, the, the, the architecture of those chips looks like they would support ArcGIS Pro pretty darn well. So it might be an option to consider. Uh, avoid those slower hard drives, uh, 5400 RPM hard disks. The transfer rate is just too slow. Will, will it work? Yeah, but you're not going to be happy. It's going to be slow and dragging. Um, so 7200 or better, or the solid state drives are really the preferred one. Uh, and definitely integrated graphics. Just avoid it. Get a dedicated video card. It's, it's worth the money. Um, you're really going to... Uh, appreciate the performance increase you get with that uh, to be honest I, we typically uh, nowadays get uh, i'm sorry gaming computers for our staff because they're designed from the get-go to handle that graphics load so they have those dedicated video cards they typically have a great network card in them uh, they have good processors in them so that's what we've started doing is is purchasing those gaming systems and they have the same, if, if not more, functionality than a traditional workstation would. Uh, but often they're actually cheaper, too. So I have a gaming laptop from uh, Asus here. I compared it with similar HP workstations and Dell workstations. It had everything they did and more. Uh, the only thing it didn't have was the ability to, to connect to a docking station, a dedicated docking station. Uh, but okay, I can find I can plug in some wires and it was like 500 to a thousand dollars less than the equivalent HP uh, or Dell uh, workstation. So again, recommending those gaming systems if you can get them. I know sometimes with purchasing that won't fly, but it's something to consider. Okay. Also to keep in mind is that Arc Pro is a 64 bit application, so it requires a 64 bit operating system. That's pretty much every version of Windows that's out there now. So Windows 7, 8.1, 10.0. Now do keep in mind those have 32-bit versions, so you want to verify that you're running the 64-bit OS. Uh, also, it'll run on server from 2008 to 2016 so that you can uh, run Arc Pro in conjunction with your ArcGIS server, ArcGIS Enterprise, uh, if you need to do that to leverage some of the geoprocessing capability, scripting, and things of that nature. It's not supported on Apple's iOS, and I don't expect it ever will be because the majority of Esri user base is governments, and governments use Windows, um, by and large. So I don't anticipate, unless there's some big shift in the market, for them ever to support iOS, and Esri has come out and said as much on their website, uh, in their blogs. Linux, it's not currently supported. Esri has not indicated they intend to support it for Arc Pro. However, um, Arc Server, ArcGIS Enterprise is supported on Linux. So there is a possibility that somewhere in the distant future, uh, Linux might be supported. But again, that's just our opinion. Esri has not indicated in any form or fashion that they intend to support Linux. But like I said, it is supported on server, so... You know, porting Pro over to that might not be that difficult. Um, so, again, in the distant future, it might be a possibility based on our experiences and, and things. Okay. A uh, couple other requirements that you're going to have with Arc Pro is it does require the 4.6.1 um, .NET framework for Microsoft to be installed. So make sure you've got that. Also, Microsoft Internet Explorer or 11 or above. And that is very specific. Okay. So one, yes, it's got to be IE. And two, it's got to be 11 or above. So even if you don't use IE, if you prefer Chrome like I do, or you use Firefox or Safari or Opera or whatever else, IE 11 or above must be installed because it's heavily integrated into the back end of Arc Pro. It's what 
Arc Pro uses to verify your license if you're using named user licensing. It's what Arc Pro uses to connect to your portal, be it ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. It's what ArcGIS Pro uses to bring in the Esri base maps. Okay? So it's very integral to all of that kind of functionality. And you would think being that integral that when you run the install, it would actually check to ensure that you had that installed on your computer. It does not. It will run the install, say it completed successfully, and you may have either no IE or you have IE9. And when you go to run Arc Pro, you're going to start to have problems. It's going to be prone to frequent crashing. It's going to say it brought in something but didn't. It's going to act very strangely there. So uh, again, make sure you're running uh, Explorer 11 above. But this also needs to be part of your plan to migrate to Arc Pro because you may have other legacy applications like financial management, billing, work orders, and so forth that may be dedicated on an older version of IE. And I found this to be true, especially in government organizations. Uh, and so upgrading to IE 11 may not be an option. So again, something that you're going to have to work out uh, as you plan your migration to Art Pro, because eventually you will have to, to migrate uh, in some, some way. So do keep that in, in mind. Well, that's it uh, for, for, for this presentation. I hope you've learned a little bit more about what you need to have to run ArcGIS Pro successfully. Have some information you can take back to your IT department and explain why you need new hardware moving forward. But remember, you know, we're here if you need some help. We're going to help you consume that power of place with current technology standards and applied spatial intelligence so that we can help you with that migration to Arc Pro. We can do a needs assessment, strategic planning uh, with that. We can help you with uh, an enterprise implementation if you're trying to tie in with Portal for ArcGIS or ArcGIS Server. Uh, we can also help integrate with other systems. So if you have existing work order systems, financial systems, or whatnot, we can assist you with that. And of course, we can help you with uh, development of web apps, mobile apps, desktop scripts. If you need to migrate some existing add-ins or scripts you have for ArcMap uh, into Arc Pro, we can help you with that. We can also provide you with Renatech services. If you need to get over that hump, you need extra technical support. And of course, if you need training, we're there. We can come on site uh, and do training on Arc Pro to help you get over the learning curve, as well as other things associated with the, the Esri uh, platform stack. So just let us know. Feel free to reach out to us at www.egisassociates.com or email us at info at egisassociates.com or even shoot us a call or give us a call at 678-710-9710. There we have it. Hope you've learned a lot and have a great day.